Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Before I begin, I want to share with you that in speaking with several of, of you today, before service started, it came to my attention that many of you have had a very emotional, stressful week. And I want to try and alleviate some of that tension. So first, I'd like to ask Tommy to come up here with me. Tommy is our security ministry leader. He and Calvin pretty much run the whole thing with a couple others that help him out. This man is my brother from another mother. And I'm here to tell you that the only one that's going to be able to get past him is that noise <laughs> and God himself. You are protected. As long as there's breath in his lungs, nothing's going to happen to you. Amen. I think I'm getting feedback from this, but I need it. Would you like to say something? No. God bless. Good to see you guys here. Good to see you. Um, wish everybody else would be here as well. <laughs> More to protect. I protect the food. Don't, don't, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> so. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. And I'd also like to take a minute the first true rabbi I ever had in my life happens to be here today. It took a lot of courage to say that because none of us like him. <laughs> but I would like my rabbi to come up and say a prayer over all of us, especially those of us who have had an extra special, stressful week. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. One thing have I desired from Hashem, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire, to meditate in his temple. Avinu Malkeinu. I just pray in the name of Yeshua, your peace, your strength. We establish the authority of Yeshua's name. We establish the authority of his blood. And whatever we have been going through, we go through it together. And whatever it is that we're going through, God has a plan and a purpose in the midst of it. And a lot of that plan and purpose has to do was draw uh, has to do with drawing us closer together to Him and drawing us closer together to each other, drawing us closer together in His name. Amen. There's a scripture that also says in the book of Hebrew, the book of Hebrews, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, especially as you see the day approaching. And Abba, we thank you for your love, your protection, your healing your strength in the midst of whatever we go through. In the midst of it, we will praise you and worship you and live for you no matter what. In the name of Yeshua, 
Amen. 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 And I feel uh, very uh, blessed that uh, Gary would uh, call me up here uh, uh, to, to pray. And I think one of the reasons that he did that was because his uh, Philadelphia Eagles beat my Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Thank you. We watched we watched the game uh, together. It was it was horrible for me. <laughs> I rather enjoyed it. Okay, we're safe. We've been blessed. Let's enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. There we go. So I've come across a couple humorous one-liners that I'd like to share with you. Oh, brother. Oh, boy. <laughs> one thing about a synagogue, you're never too bad to come in, and you're never too good to stay out. I know some liberals that call them the Ten Suggestions. I love this one. Don't let your worries kill you. Let the synagogue help. <laughs> the good Lord didn't create anything without a purpose, but mosquitoes come close. <laughs> People are funny. They want the front of the bus, the middle of the road, and the back of the synagogue. <laughs> Opportunity may knock once, but temptation bangs on your front door forever. Yeah. Oh, wow. Here's a good one. Quit griping about your synagogue. If it was perfect, you couldn't belong. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why some people change synagogues. What difference does it make which one you stay home from? <laughs> Never argue with an idiot. They drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. <laughs> this one's for the ladies. When you ask your husband to do something, he'll do it. You don't have to keep reminding him every six months. <laughs> and this one's for the men. Moses was leading his people through the desert for 40 years. It seems even in biblical times, men avoided asking the way. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the numerous different denominations of religions and a little bit of its history. How did Judaism become a religion? Well, Judaism emerged from the beliefs and practices of the people known as Israel. What is considered classical or rabbinical Judaism did not emerge until the first century CE. Judaism traces its origins to the covenant God made with Abraham and his lineage that God would make them a sacred people and give them a land. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the first century CE? Here's what Rabbi Google had to say. <laughs> CE stands for common or current era, while BCE stands for before the common or current era. These abbreviations have a shorter history than B.C. and A.D. The first century was the century spanning A.D. 1 through A.D. 100, according to the Julian calendar. It is often written as the first century A.D. or first century C.E. to distinguish it from the first century B.C. which preceded it. The first century is considered part of the classical era or historical period. So there you go, clear as mother's milk. <laughs> I have no idea the meaning of what I just said. <laughs> so if anybody out here understands it, come and see me after service when I'm done battling up here, okay? Because I don't get that at all. 
If you recall, the last time I spoke, my message was about biblical government. I shared that God used Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery and bring them to Mount Sinai, where he gave them a set of laws. These laws formed the basis for a new government. That government was a political unit governed by officials thought to be divinely guided. In other words, religion ran the government, and the laws were based on loyalty to the God of Israel. Mm. This was, in my opinion, the first and only religion that God gave to his chosen people and ultimately all people. After all, what was taught before Yeshua came? What did Yeshua teach when he was here? What did Yeshua say to continue teaching just before he ascended into heaven? What did the disciples continue teaching after Yeshua left? For me, it's a no-brainer. Yet somehow today, there are more, get this, there are more than 45,000 denominations globally. Wow. I, that number is staggering. Followers of Yeshua span the globe, but the globe body of more than 2 billion Christians is separated into thousands of denominations. Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, the list goes on. Estimations show there are more than 200 Christian denominations in the U.S. and a staggering 45,000 globally, according to the Center of the Study of Global Christianity. So why does Christianity have so many branches? Well, a courtesy look shows that differences in belief, power grabbing, and corruption all had a play in the, in the part of that. But on some level, differences and variety have been markers for Christianity since the very beginning. There's never been a united Christianity. The early splits. The early church, which spans from the start of Yeshua's ministry in A.D. 27 to A.D. 325, was divided primarily based on geography. Worship styles and interpretations of Yeshua's teachings varied based on regional cultures and customs accordingly. There were also major breaks over Christian theology during this time. For example, one church divided on Yeshua's relationship with God. They claimed that because Yeshua was begotten or brought up about by God, he was a lesser divinity than God. Whereas another church claimed that Yeshua was God in human form. The Catholic Church successfully suppressed other potential Christian offshoots partly by sustained persecution, including military expedition, exp, expeditions against some labeled heretics. With the backing of secular rulers, heretics might be burned at the stake or forced into denying their beliefs. An example of one split is that we call ourselves believers while the rest of the Christian churches are called Christians. The Christian churches call us Christians, and that in itself doesn't bother me. But one of the things that believers and Christians disagree on today is that we believe the first covenant still holds wisdom and values that we should continue to follow, Amen. like the Ten Commandments. Amen. Not necessarily because we have to, but because we are free to. Amen. Yeah. God loves discipline. Yes. Yeah. And discipline is mentioned in the Bible about 60 times. Christians are taught that the first covenant is over and done with. I've often thought to myself, I'd like to challenge this line of thinking. It's something that 
isn't done very often. So you, you know what? Now is as good a time as anything. I'm going to challenge this right now and get it straightened out once and for all. There's my challenge. The red flag has been thrown down. Michelle, would you be kind enough to bring up the challenge equipment up here for me? We're going to get this straightened out once and for all. All right. We're going to get this taken care of. I gotta talk to the challenge booth. Okay, let me plug in. Okay, here we go. All right, it says some. It says here. Some people don't realize that the Ten Commandments aren't multiple choice. But I think sometimes that's true. It says, uh, don't put a question mark where God put a period. I, I think that's true. And it says, we don't change scripture. Scripture changes us. Okay, that's it from the challenge booth? Okay, all right, very good. Okay, disconnect. Michelle, thank you so very much. You've been a wonderful assistant. Yay, Michelle. Yay, Michelle. All right. So, I'm not satisfied with that. I'm going to take it a step further. Wes, would you make sure that the red mic is on? And if there's any feedback, try to... Uh, try to take care of that. I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to put it on loudspeaker. Um, is, is this the mighty one? It, is it true that Yeshua and you and the Holy Spirit are one? Yes. Is it true that Yeshua did not come to abolish your first covenant, but to give meaning to it? Yes. Is it true that both covenants are important? Yes. Is it true that both covenants are valid? Yes. Then tell me, Mighty One, which one is the most important? Both of them. <laughs> Who was that? Who do you think it was? You. It was Abba. God. Abba. 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 That's right. No, really. Who was that? No, really. Who do you want it to be? Did he say anything that was incorrect? No. That was great. Answer yes, yes, but you don't know. Amen. That was great. Amen. The denomination explosion. I'm moving forward now. Okay, I got tricky words here, so bear with me. After the protestant. I screwed that up already. Protestant. 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 Ah. I never did do goodly in English. <laughs> After the Protestant Reformation, Reformation in 1517, the number of denominations really began to multiply. Yeah. Okay. The Reformation instigated by a number of events most notably by Martin Luther's 95 Thesis, yeah. emphasized a personal faith. This movement was in reaction to the fact that interpretations of the Bible, grace, the absolution of sins, and entry into heaven were all 
mediated through priests in Catholicism. Luther and his followers claimed that the Bible, not a church hierarchy, was the ultimate authority over all people, including priests and the Pope. Amen. And the several practices such as granting indulgences like paying the church money to be absolved of sins were corrupt. Yes. Well, wouldn't that be something? Pay five dollars and your sin's gone? What would you do if you ran out of money? You'd still be stuck. Initially, there were just a few major protestant, 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 Pro, yeah, that word. Right. There were a few major that word groups, but ultimately, the Reformation ushered in more Christian offshoots. By the 17th century, the contemporary word denomination began to be used to describe religious offshoots. It had used scripture to critique the Roman Catholic Church, claiming that any believer could read scripture and have a personal relationship with God. Amen. But then the obvious problem emerged. Whose interpretation of scripture was the right one? As believers debated the scriptures and sacraments, churches formed and split based on numerous biblical interpretations, ways of worship, and organizational structures. From these debates, denominations such as the Presbyterians, Mennonites, Baptists, Quakers, among others, took root. Other denominations were formed out of a play of power, such as when Henry VIII started the Church of England in 1534. He wanted to establish the political immunity of England. And one way to do that was religious immunity from Rome. Yes. Henry VIII also wanted a divorce that the church refused to grant. Yeah. Then he could grant his own divorce. Mm -hmm. so, so you see his, his motive in wanting to do that? It wasn't biblical. Although interpretations may be seen as divisive or even led to violent conflicts between rival denominations, these splits do have an upside. There's kind of a kind of an, an anti-corruption mechanism in the fragmentation, as these splits can offer leverage to people in lower social positions. For instance, after the Reformation challenged authority, townspeople could begin to question religious authorities about corrupt or questionable practices. Yes. Messianic Judaism is relatively new, emerging in the 1960s. And although it's young, I personally feel an overwhelming power of truth within the Messianic movement. Amen. I had zero spiritual guidance from my parents and really didn't think much about it until about a year before finding Levishem. This December will be 14 years that Michelle and I have been attending Levishem, and it has changed me for the better in several ways. And the only ones that would know that it has changed me are the ones that knew me before Levishem, which means only my wife can, can verify that claim. Me too. You don't count. <laughs> In closing, I'd like to say that I could get through this without getting too emotional. Um, The Bible is the best-selling book and the most often read book 
Amen. of all time. Yes. Yes. It never gets old. Never. And every day you wake up, it is renewed. Amen. The tasks that God places ahead of you is never as great as the power he places behind you. Amen. Let's not place our own interpretations upon God's lips. For when we do, it's usually to justify something we want to believe, something we want to do, or something we want to say. Yes, it's true that some scripture is more difficult to understand, but God is much more complex than we are. Amen. And maybe he intentionally wanted some things to be a bit of a mystery. Amen. Cover to cover, the Bible is perfect Amen. because God is perfect. Amen. Right. And we have no right to change it or replace it. God has a message for all of us. In short, he's saying, I'm right here. I've always been here. And I will never take you to a place where my grace will not protect you. Because you are my child, and I love you with a love that you have yet to understand. Amen. Thank you so much, and God bless.